Hi, this is Pastor Randy. Thanks for joining me for this New Year's Day message. Review, revolve, renew, resolve. It's a four-step process for how we can have a good year as Christians in 2023. Review, revolve, renew, and resolve. Today's scripture is from Psalm 51, verses 10 to 15. It's David's prayer where he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. As we begin a new year, it's that time when people often think about getting a fresh start and making changes in their lives. Will this year mark a new beginning for you, or will it just be a rerun of the past? Shirked responsibilities, lukewarm commitments, you know you better than I do. I've come up with a four-step process based on Scripture that I hope will help us make 2023 a great year for our church and for us as individual Christians. It's in the form of four R's. No, not reading, writing, arithmetic. I'm talking about review, revolve, renew, and resolve. First, we need to review where we've been. This involves seeing how God has been faithful to us in the past, both as a church and individually. The prophet Isaiah puts it this way in Isaiah 63, 7 to 9. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us and the great goodness to the house of Israel, which he has granted them according to his mercy and the abundance of his steadfast love. For he has said, surely they are my people. And he became their savior. In all their afflictions, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love... And in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. He has made us his people. He suffered with us in our suffering and has redeemed us and carried us by his love. When I read that part where it says he lifted them up and carried them, I was reminded of the 1936 poem by Mary Stevenson called The Footprints Poem. It goes like this. One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord, and across the sky flashed scenes from his life. And for each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. And this really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my son, my precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Remind yourself how faithful God has been to you, the times he's carried you. In addition, it's time to review what we've done for him, not just what he's done for us, but what have you done for him? How faithful have you been to him? Isaiah 63, 10 says, yet they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Have you grieved the Spirit of God by the things you've done or failed to do? It's time for us not only to count our many blessings, but also to count our many failings. To take off the rose-colored glasses and see ourselves for who we've been, warts and all. And then thank God for being there for us in spite of how we've been. That's one of the most important things about this time of year or any time when we desire a new beginning. In order to be able to effectively look ahead to what we hope to be, we need to be able to look back honestly at who we've been. Review. That's our first step. The second step in our process is revolve. After we look at where we've been, this next step asks the question, where are you now? You know, when you enter a large shopping mall, it's common for them to have a directory sign posted near the entrance. And the sign shows you a map of all the stores in the mall. One of the most important parts of the sign, however, is the part that says, you are here. It's hard to know how to get to where you want to go if you don't know where you are. That's true in the mall, but it's also true in our spiritual life. Once we've seen where we've been by reviewing our past, 
We need to find out where we are. We can discover that by asking the question, what does my life revolve around? Better still, who does my life revolve around? When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, he said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, Matthew 22, verse 37, 38. Our life would revolve around God. And in Matthew 6, 33, he advised that we seek first his kingdom, God's kingdom, and his righteousness. These are the things that our life should revolve around. Are you spending your time and energy energy chasing your own dreams, your own goals, or are you centering your life on Jesus and his purposes for your life? For years, people believed that the sun revolves around the earth, that our terrestrial ball was the center of our universe. Then Copernicus came along in 1667 and proposed that they were wrong. The sun, he said, is the center of the universe and the earth revolves around it. God gave us a clue in creation itself about what our priority should be. Is the sun the center of your universe right now? Is the son of God the heart of your motivation for all you do? Or is your faith just one of many balls that you juggle in and out of your self-centered life? Has your job or recreation or success or personal power or anything else than Jesus become the center of your world? Isaiah describes too many of us in Isaiah 63, 19, when he says, We have long been like those whom you do not rule, like those not called by your name. What does your life revolve around? Are you known as one who is called by his name? After you answered that question, you're ready to move on to the third step. Renew yourself. We renew ourselves when we repent of our sins that we see in ourselves. When we honestly ask ourselves what our lives revolve around and we don't like the answers we got, renewing ourselves involves asking God to change the direction of our life, the motivation of our hearts, to make us more like Jesus. We trust in the promise of 1 John 1, verse 9, that says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we need to go back a step or two because 1 John chapter 1 says that if we say we have not sinned, then the truth is not in us. And we are calling God a liar because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We renew ourselves by a fresh commitment of our lives to him. Like David in his prayer in Psalm 51, verse 10 and 12, we pray, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Far too many of us try to tackle the job of doing Christ's work without first spending time being renewed in our spirit. Jesus promised to make us new. He promised that if we seek him, we will find him. Like Elijah We must listen for the still, small voice of God. That involves resting in him. Are we taking time just getting to know him, seeking him in prayer and reflection, in Bible study and fellowship? Are we listening for his voice? God doesn't desire more servants to just hurry off to do his will, or or at least what they assume to be his will. He desires to renew us by growing in relationship with us. It wasn't the hyper-busy worker Martha that got Jesus' praise, but her sister Mary, who sat at his feet and enjoyed his company and teaching. She, Jesus said, had made the best choice for life. Relationships deepened through the time spent together, through joys shared and sorrows too. Isaiah 63 says that in our afflictions, he was afflicted. In other words, God cares about what you're going through. He wants to share those burdens you carry. Like Mary, are you making the best choice for your life? God is seeking children to love, not employees to hand out job assignments to. So renew yourself by reveling in his forgiveness, by basking in his love, by asking the giver of all good and perfect gifts himself to renew you. And then, and only then, are you ready for the final step in the process, which we like to do on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, to resolve to do whatever it is that you feel God calls you to do. Too often, we jump straight to the resolutions part without the review, revolve, and renew part. 
Can you imagine a doctor prescribing the medicine before examining their patient? That's how foolish many of our New Year's resolutions must be. We prescribe solutions to problems that we have not yet defined. I can't tell you what you should resolve to do. That can only be worked out between you and God as you seek him and his will for your life. But I do feel that you can make better choices if you remember the proper order of things. Review, revolve, renew, and then resolve. Maybe you feel God speaking to you today about some area of your life that needs his care. Perhaps you know that life revolves around things that don't last, that your life has been such that you'll never find real peace or meaning to your life in the things you're pursuing. It's time to put first things first and give God his proper place. Maybe you long to be renewed, to feel forgiveness for those things you've done and for those you've left undone, to find an inner sense of peace and joy that does not depend on your circumstances, to rest in the arms of a loving Heavenly Father. Whatever need you might have, this is the time for new beginnings, new hope, and new life. I invite you to join me now in prayer. Heavenly Father, search my heart and know me, and help me know myself as well. Help me see areas in my life where I have not loved you with my whole heart and soul and mind and strength, to see areas where I have per- pursued my own purposes and not yours. Transform me through your Spirit so that I might be made new in Christ and live a life that truly honors and pleases you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a a wonderful new year and that you will be renewed and and resolve and you'll have review and revolve and all those things we just talked about, that they will be things that you will do as you grow closer to Christ in 2023. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen.